In last week's video, I talked about the new Dolby Atmos workflow in Studio One and the fact that this workflow is actually easier than the one in Logic Pro and also more functional. However, there's one feature in Logic Pro that so far no other digital audio workstation has replicated, and that is the deep integration with the special audio capabilities of the AirPods Pro or the AirPods Max or also some of the Beats headphones. And this deep integration is relevant because it allows music producers to monitor audio in exactly the way people would hear that through Apple Music. So the fact that this is missing in Studio One is a bit of a bummer. However, as it turns out, Audio Movers recently published a plugin that brings that capability to other digital audio workstations. It's a banal renderer for Apple Music. It works extremely well with Studio One. So let's check it out. Before I get started, I need to make two comments. The first one is that everything that I'm going to show you today, I purchased with my own money. This is not a sponsored video. Everything that I'm going to say is strictly my own opinion. And the second thing is that because the spatial audio capabilities of the AirPods rely on the spatial audio framework that Apple provides, the plugin that we are going to talk about today only works on a Mac. However, since I do know that a lot of people who watch my videos are Windows people, I decided to add an alternative solution to this video that works on Windows as well. It is not as elegant as the plugin from Audio Movers, and it also doesn't provide the exact same functionality. However, it does something very similar. It utilizes the subaware head tracker. If you came to this video for just the subaware head tracker solution, I'm going to leave timestamps in the description below. Feel free to jump ahead. So what is this famous plugin that we're talking about here? It is a new plugin from a company called Audio Movers, and it promises to be a banal renderer for Apple Music, meaning that it is replicating the spatial audio capabilities of Logic Pro for any digital audio workstation that is multi-channel capable. If you want to check it out, there's a free trial. It's also not that particularly expensive, and we're going to use it in Studio One, but once again, it works for any digital audio workstation that is multi-channel capable. So if you're working with Cubase or Nuendo or in any other multi-channel uh, digital audio workstation, you can use that plugin as well. And with that being said, let's hop into our Studio One project. Now I'm going to use a very simple project again today because all I really need in order to demonstrate the capabilities of the banal render of Apple Music is one track and one loop, and that's what I have here. I'm going to use the same loop that I also used in last week's project. I'm also not going to talk too much about how to set up the Dolby Atmos project. I did that last week. If you want to know how I did that, I invite you to watch that video first. I'm going to leave a link in the description below, and there's also going to be a card here somewhere. But here we just have one loop that is part of the Dolby Atmos setup, it is routed into the bed of the Dolby Atmos renderer. Let's just have a listen on how that sounds. So it's a very, very simple synth loop. And as I said before, it is routed into the bed of the Dolby Atmos renderer. That essentially means if I'm moving that around, I essentially see how the, the additional channels are coming in here. So let me just snap that back. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to move that, uh, or going to change that to a mono signal. And the easiest way to really do that is by folding the left and right channels together. So let's just set the spread to zero. And that will help me a little bit in understanding sort of the directionality of the sound once we get into the head tracking portion of this video. Now, in last week's video, I pointed out that the track on which the Dolby Atmos renderer sits behaves somewhat unexpectedly, and that is because it scales dynamically to the output of the Dolby Atmos renderer. So if this Dolby Atmos renderer is set to a stereo output, then anything that you put after the Dolby Atmos renderer becomes a stereo plugin. And if the Dolby Atmos renderer is set to 7.1.4, then anything that is put after the Dolby Atmos renderer becomes a 7.1.4 plugin, and that actually scales dynamically. And that can create issues with plugin that you put after the Dolby Atmos renderer. Once again, watch last Last week's video if you want to know the details. However, some of you have pointed out that I can actually get around that problem by using the listening bus, because as it turns out, the listen bus in Studio One can be set independently from the output, and that will allow us to put a plugin on the listen bus that is 7.1.4, and we are not in danger of losing the settings for that particular plugin. So let me first close the renderer here, because I don't really need that right now, and let's also close the panner. Don't need that either. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to enable the listen bus. So let's enable that. And uh, by right clicking, and I can simply say here, enable listen bus. This will enable the listen bus. It currently, everything is set to stereo. Now, what I want is I want that listen bus to be locked into 7.1.4 because that is the format that I need in order to mimic uh, the output of Apple Music. So let's uh, switch the Dolby Atmos renderer over to 7.1.4. 
And then essentially make sure, let's make sure that the listen bus is also set to 7.1.4. And in order to do that, we go into the song settings under spatial audio in the output section. We now should see the main output and the listen bus. And you already see that the listen bus is actually set independently. So I switched the main out to 7.1.4. That caused the render, or actually I switched the renderer to 7.1.4. That, that Uh, caused the main out to be switched to 7.1.4. However, the listen bus was uh, locked in at stereo. So the first thing I need to do is here, I also need to set that to 7.1.4. Now that has obviously the advantage that if I now change the output of the renderer to something else, the listen bus will be unaffected. So let's just say OK and apply. And uh, then the next thing is I need to add the plugin. That's really all I need to do. And uh, for that, just go into the inserts here and let's add the audio movers by now renderer. Now I pointed out in last week's video that uh, audio units don't really work with Studio One in multi-channel setup. So what you really need to do is you need to use the VST3 version of that plugin. So uh, the VST3 version of the banal renderer. And as soon as I do that, I see the banal renderer popping up. It already recognized the channels. And by the way, the channel uh, configuration is absolutely correct. So it works perfectly with Studio One. There's nothing wrong in the way the channel are so ordered. They're exactly the way they're supposed to be. And even though I have not yet put my headphones on or my Apple AirPods on, I already see two options, the static banal renderer that essentially renders uh, just static banal audio in the way Apple Music would render it. And then there's also a personalized option for those of you who have uh, essentially kind of a personalized head-related transfer function on Apple Music. You can use that as well. And if I now play the audio, I I should already hear something even though I'm still with my regular headphones. So it's currently in the center channel because I positioned it right snapped in the in the in the middle of the of the sound field. So let's just move that around to see. So as you can see the signs around the rear surround and the side surround are coming in at exactly where they're supposed to come in. So let's just snap that back here. And let's just change that to a object. And for that, I'm just going to switch the uh, panner from the surround panner to the spatial object panner. That will now essentially change the output or that will change the track to an object. So if I'm now opening up the Dolby Atmos renderer, I now see that as an object in the Dolby Atmos renderer. It's no longer coming in on the bed channels. It's now coming in as an object. So let's switch over to the AirPods. And a uh, couple of things I need to point out before I do that. The first thing is that in order for that to work, the uh, Mac has to have the AirPods as their main output device. Otherwise, the AirPods are not going to communicate the rotational or the, the positional information to the Mac. So if you go into the output settings, make sure that the output is set to AirPods. That's the one thing. The second thing is we also need to make sure that we actually hear everything through Studio One uh, and that essentially means we need to go into the preference and also make sure that the playback device is set to the Apple AirPods. Now, I have it set up slightly differently and let me just explain why that is. I'm using a loopback device. Now, the reason I'm using a loopback device, and let me just switch over the loopback here, is primarily because I want to make sure that everything that I hear is also something that you hear. So what I'm really doing is I'm taking the output signal that is produced by Studio One and I'm splitting it up and I'm sending that into the AirPods that I hear and I'm sending that into my roadcaster so that you here. So you should hear exactly the same thing that I'm hearing. But this is really just for the purpose of this video. If you're working with that, uh, all you really need to do is you need to set the output, the playback device to Apple AirPods, and that's everything that you need to do. So let's go into back into Studio One. And uh, then let's see. Let me close the renderer here. I don't really need that. Now, as you can see, the uh, plugin has now identified that I have the AirPods connected, and I now have two additional options. I can uh, also choose the banal renderer head tracking, and I can also choose the banal renderer head tracking personalized, which are two options that allow me to uh, essentially use the head tracking capabilities of my Apple AirPods. So let's just play the audio and see what we get. Now, once again, I have the signal set as a mono signal right in front of me, and that's what I should hear. So let's just press play. I'm currently set to the static banal renderer personalized. If I now switch it over to head tracking, I should actually now have head tracking enabled. So if I'm moving my head, I, I should hear that as a positional information, you should actually hear that as a panning information. So if I'm moving my head to the left, I hear the signal here. If I'm moving my head to the right, I hear the signal here. 
I can obviously also change the, the signal around. So let me just open up the panner here and let's just move that maybe to the, let's just kind of take, put it out of the way here. So I can move that around. Obviously I can also move that up and then can do all kinds of weird things with it. So this works extremely, extremely well. There's just one thing that you need to be aware of, and that is the fact that these are dynamically recalibrating, and that is both a good thing as well as a bad thing. It is a good thing because you don't need to recalibrate manually. So even if these would drift, you wouldn't notice because they are constantly making sure that everything is set correctly. However, on the downside, if you look too long into the wrong direction, they will actually think that this is now the front. And uh, let me show what I mean by that. Let's just kind of play that sound again. And now it's now right in front of me. So if I'm now moving my head to the, uh, to the left, I hear that signal on the right. And if I'm staying in that position for any length of time, it will actually recalibrate. So let's just wait. So it's now recalibrating. And then now it now thinks that this is uh, sort of the front. So if I'm now kind of moving back to my screen, I now have the signal on the left side and I need to wait again until everything recalibrates. So let's just wait for a second. And it is now recalibrated again. So if you're working with this plugin, be aware that you cannot stay too long in a certain listening position. Otherwise the AirPods will think that this is now the front and it will recalibrate and everything will be screwed up a little. But this is once again, it's just a minor annoyance. But what if you're working on Windows and you don't really have access to that particular plugin? Is there still a possibility to do something similar, to do binaural rendering that is head tracked? And the answer to that is yes. Uh, and we can do that with the subaware head tracker. Now, for those of you who have seen me work with the subaware head tracker, you guys know that uh, it is a little fiddly to put that on my headphones. So what I'm going to do again is I'm going to disappear for a second. And when I come back, I have that on my headphones and we can start working with something that you can also do on Windows. So I've now connected the head tracker to my headphones and I've also cabled up a little. I have not yet connected the cable to my computer. I'm going to do that in a second. So let's just put the headphones on. And uh, everything I really need to do is I need to exchange the uh, binaural renderer for Apple Music with the binaural renderer that comes with the Subaware head tracker. That's really all I need to do. And this works once again for Windows in exactly the same way as it works for a Mac. I'm going to do it on a Mac today because I'm already on a Mac, but um, you know, kind of if you're on Windows, just follow the exact same way the exact same kind of procedures. So let's just move the listen bus thingy here, the dynal renderer on the listen bus thing out of the way. And let's also close the panner here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the banal renderer and I'm going to add the subaware one. And once again, uh, we need to use the VSD3 version. The audio unit version is not really working. If you're on Windows, obviously no difference. Uh, and uh, that's essentially kind of the plugin now. And a couple of things that we need to do. First of all, obviously we need to connect the head tracker. So let me just do that. As soon as I do that, I will actually see that it has identified a head tracker. I need to click on the, uh, on the on this little thingy here in order to actually enable the head tracking. And I now have that here. Also make sure that the settings are correct. In my particular case, the cable is on the left. So this is also set correctly. And then we want to make sure that we have the correct channel layout. And that is a 7.1.4. It is on the 7.1.4 bus. So let's me just switch that over to Dolby 7.1.4. And I should now hear exactly the same thing just with the subaware head tracker. So let me just kind of play the audio again. And as you can hear, essentially, uh, I get a very similar impression. Once again, it is not the exact rendering that you get with Apple Music, but it is uh, the same immersive experience. Now you could technically also use a personalized head-related transfer function with the Subaware plugin. However, getting one of those is really, really difficult to do. I might actually do a video about that in, in one, of, one of the coming weeks or months. Uh, but uh, in general, essentially kind of it works uh, quite well without any personalization. Um, so as you can see, uh, it's already drifting a little. So here in this particular case, I, I sometimes need to double click on the head in order to kind of recalibrate. Now there's one complication here, and that is that the uh, layout of the channels is actually not correct. So let me just go to the uh, panel here 
And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to move the panner to the back here, to the left back. And let's just play the audio again. And the thing is, I can actually kind of, mo as, um, I can solo the individual channels. If I'm clicking on a channel here, so for example, on the center channel, I'm, I'm uh, soloing that particular channel. But the thing that's really interesting in this particular case, case is that this is actually, it should be at the, at the back. But if I mono that particular speaker, I'm actually not hearing anything. And the reason I'm not hearing anything because the signal is actually on the side. So in this plugin, the side surrounds and the rear surrounds are swapped. Uh, and that essentially means in order to actually make that work, we first need to also swap them back. Uh, make the side surrounds, the rear surrounds, the rear surrounds, the side surrounds. Now, fortunately, this is fairly straightforward to do. All we really need to do is we need a special plugin. And uh, the plugin that I'm going to use is called M-Channel Matrix that has the very nice ad added uh, feature that it is completely free. It is from Melda Production and it works uh, very well for that particular purpose. So let's see what we do here. Now, the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to let me, because I, I still have that more solo, so let me just kind of click that away. And then I'm going to close the plugin. I'm done that right now I'm also hosting the panner here and what I'm going to do is I'm going to add an instance of M channel matrix and once again we want to use the VST3 version of M channel matrix and let's just move it ahead of the subaware head tracker now uh, one thing that is a little bit annoying with M channel matrix is that the user interface is somewhat confusing we need what we really need is because we have 12 channels we have a 7.1.4 signal so we need actually 12 input 12 output channels the only way to do that and that is a little counterintuitive in that particular plugin is to switch the mode from left right to ambisonics mode why ambisonics because the ambisonics mode is the only mode that has enough channels for us to use once we have changed that we need to change the ambisonics settings and in the ambisonic settings we need to select one that has at least 12 channels so what i'm going to do is i'm going to simply select uh third order ambisonics 16 channels and that's essentially it uh, so that's really everything I need to do. Once again, that is a little confusing and, uh, you know, kind of Melda production plugins have uh, this uh, reputation that their interface is a little confusing. In this particular case, it actually really is confusing because you first need to select the ambisonic setting and then you need to go back in one more time and change the ambisonic setting internally. But what we want to do is we want to switch out channels 5, 6 and 7, 8. So uh, channels 5, 6 are supposed to come in not at 5, 6, but instead they should come in at 7, 8. So this is the input, 5 is actually the rear surround so which one is it here this one and this one and uh, 7 8 is actually the side surround so we need to just switch them around and that should have taken care of everything so let's just see again how that works let's just play the audio again and let me just open up the subway head tracker oops that is completely wrong so, um, so if I'm now soloing the rear surround here, it is actually correct. And uh, that is now the side surround. So if I'm moving that to the side, that is correct as well. So once again, if you're working with the Supperware plugin, be sure that you swap rear and sides around channels around. Everything else works exactly the way it's supposed to, so, to work. And as you've seen, we sometimes need to double click on the head here in order to recalibrate. This was one of the big things that you don't have to do with the AirPods and the um, banal renderer for Apple Music solution because the AirPods uh, recalibrate dynamically, which is super convenient as long as you don't stay too long in the certain position that is not the center position. But this is really everything that we need to do and that works once again equally well for Windows as well as for Macs. But this is really everything I wanted to say today. Now, as you've seen, this is all very, very simple. And uh, if you're working on a Mac and want to use uh, Dolby Atmos with a digital audio workstation that is not logic, then I think the banal renderer from Audio Movers is a must-have uh, because that is super convenient and it gives you exactly the same representation that you would have in Logic Pro. It allows you to monitor everything in exactly the way people will hear it on Apple Music and that is super cool. And if you're on Windows, the Subway Head Tracker is a nice solution, not particularly expensive. You just need to be, to be careful about the channel order. That's everything you need to do. Everything else works just fine. Now, if you have any questions or comments please use the comment section below or you can also join our discord community um, in that link is in the description below and with that being said see you at the next video